Today, I'm going to walk you through step by step how to create those amazing 3D flyovers using Shot Tracer Pro. Let's get right into it. First of all, all you'll need is our Shot Tracer Pro software, and the same tutorial will apply to a Mac and to PC. And you will need to uh, create an account with Google Earth Studio. And that's super, super easy to do. Anyone can get a, an account with Google Earth Studio. It's completely free. In order to do so, simply search Google Earth Studio on Google, then click the first link that pops up. I'm gonna also have a direct link in the description below and sign up for an account. You won't automatically uh, get an account with Google Earth Studio. They will actually send you an email within a couple of hours telling you that you have been accepted to the Google Earth Studio because it's still a beta version and you'll be able to log in right after that. So fill out that form, the link is in the description below, and then let's get right into it after you've created your account. Once you've logged in, you are going to be welcomed with a Google Earth Studio page um, and you're able to create a blank project. So that's us right now. We are creating a blank project and we're gonna call that project. Um, I'm just going to call it the golf hole or the golf course that I'm playing at and the golf hole that I will be working on. So I'm going to be working at Alfarini hole number 16 and I want the dimensions of the video to be just a regular uh, 1080 uh, 30 FPS video and I'm ready to start. Once I open up Google Earth Studio I am greeted with uh, a lot of stuff, but trust me, this is super, super simple to use. Um, first thing we, we basically want to do is click on the search lo uh, locator. And I am looking for my golf course right here, Alfarini Golf Club. So once I've done that, I can move on to locating the golf hole, which is somewhere up here, right? And now I press command on my Mac keyboard and I can sway the camera into a 3D kind of perspective. Now keep in mind that not every golf course is 3D mapped. So for example, if I type in, let's say, Jumeira Golf Estates, which is in Dubai, I only get a flat kind of image to work from. So there's no 3D scan, for example, in Dubai um, of those courses, but the US has extremely well mapped um, golf courses around the US, the UK, um, southern part of Spain. So all those golf destinations, golf holiday destinations are pretty well mapped in 3D. So all you need to check before you head out to a course or before you think about doing those 3D flyovers, make sure that you go onto Google Earth or Google Earth Studio and find out if the golf course is actually 3D mapped. If not, you can also use those 2D maps with the exact same workflow as we're going through here, but obviously those 3D map look sick. So without further ado, let's go into this tutorial. We will be working on um, the whole 16 of Alfarini golf course. That's a sudden um, Spain located golf course and I like that because uh, it's a great map to work on um, nice shaping of the course and like I said make sure that the golf course is 3d map be before you head out if it's not no problem you can always work off a 2d map with the same workflow once I have located my hole so this is hole 16 here at Alfarini I want to position the camera as basically my first keyframe, meaning that this position right here is where the camera is supposed to start its flyover. So I, I want it to be around here with the T with giving a lot of well a sufficient amount of slack to the T box before the camera um, motion gets to the T box. And the reason for this is because I want to fire. The, 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 the line, the tracer line, before the camera gets to the tee box. And one thing to note right here is setting up the camera 
You don't want to be too high. You don't want to be too low. You kind of want to be in this uh, nice little uh, flyover spot over the golf course to give yourself this amazing bird's eye perspective of your golf shot. And once you've done that, once you're happy with your camera position, I want you to press the uh, forward, the upward arrow key and make sure that your camera travels in a straight line, a straight line to the destination where your ball lands. Meaning that if, for example, we were a little bit offset and for example, we're doing, we're going like this, I know that I could miss my landing spot because my landing spot is going to be just right, just to the right of the bunker. Um, and yeah, so I want to make sure that I have a straight line when I press the arrow key to my ball landing location because we have to make sure that the camera movement is in a straight line. There's no such things as a pan or tilt with the camera head, virtual camera head in that render. So I'm going to make sure that I, I like this position right here. All right, that looks good. And now I mark the first keyframe. So the beginning keyframe from where the render is going to start, the 3D flyover render. And for this, I'm just going to simply press the keyframe all attributes um, uh, uh, button right here. So let me press that. And you'll see those three uh, vertical keyframe indicators that have just been uh, positioned. Once I'm happy with that, I simply take that red vertical bar and I scroll it all the way to the end, to the 450. And the 450 means 450 frames until the end. You can change that, but just for now and the way I'm using it, I'm just using it of the rec basic uh, standard uh, settings from the batch. And what I do now is I, well, I've set that Key, uh, the keyframe slider to the 450 to the last frame of the timeline for the render and then I click inside this preview of the golf hole and I move the camera forward. Make sure you move it forward in a straight line. If you make any mistakes you can go back to, to the initial keyframe back here and then move it back to the front click on the preview screen and then use the forward key, not the mouse, only the forward key to move forward with um, the camera, the 3D camera. Once you've done that, you're happy, press again the keyframe for all attributes and you'll notice that this little keyframe indicator just below it is currently yellow. Once you press it, it turns blue and it gives you that path for the 3D camera to fly over. For a preview, we are going to set this, uh, the keyframe slider back to zero. So to the beginning, we press enter. And now we have the flyover of that golf hole, of that first shot of the tee that we want to then trace inside Shot Tracer Pro. Once I'm happy with this, I simply go to the render option to render out this scene. And here I can now set my dimensions again. We'll keep it at 1080p, 30 frames per second. I want to move the watermark of Google Earth off to the side, to the bottom, so it's not in the middle of the screen, and I press Submit. Once I've done that, it takes a few minutes for Google Cloud to process this video, and once it's processed, you'll get an email notifying you that you can now download your 3D rendered flyover of that hole. Once you've done that, you can simply go to Shot Tracer Pro and import the videos you want to work with. For our purpose, we're going to be using this video right here of our tee shot on that particular hole we have just mapped. So this nice little draw right here. And we want to overlay the 3D flyover of Google Earth Studio. Once you have downloaded the 3D render, go back to Shot Tracer Pro and import that video clip to Shot Tracer Pro. Shot Tracer Pro will not recognize any shots in that video, so please add it manually. So we want to set the impact frame manually. The impact frame meaning that the moment where the line will start. So we're going to set it around the beginning where we're happy with the render starting. So we're going to add shot right here. 
then we will go into the gears icon and set the option to edit trajectory. Once we have set edit trajectory, we decide we choose line molding, not keyframes, but line molding. Once you've done that and you're happy with the first frame at which the tracer will start, set impact frame and then start working on your line by molding the line, the tracer line to the shape of the actual golf shot. So what we, as you can remember, we had this nice little draw. So I'm gonna set the shape to the nice little draw and then under acceleration, I'm gonna set acceleration to the minimum so that the acceleration isn't too fast to the peak, but rather just a natural slow motion moving upwards. Once I've done that, I set my landing spot. So I have this nice little draw curve and I set create line. Now I've created the line and I can play it back. And what you will notice is that that line does not stay in place. So it's you have the camera moving forward, but the line is kind of stuck to the camera without readjusting itself in 3D space. To fix that, it's very, very simple. All you need to do is go to camera tracking. Once you are inside of camera tracking, go a few frames forward and then start marking key frame spots and key tracking spots by just simply clicking on the screen. Let me pull it up a little bit bigger so you can see better. We are marking a couple of positions. You can see those little tags that I'm doing right here. And what you wanna make sure is keep those tags, not in the trees, but in the fairway areas. Those flat fairway areas, that's what you want to tag around the area where the line is gonna come. And then all you need to do is um, press track markers, wait a couple of seconds until the done button reappears. You can move forward if you wanted to create or add a couple of more markers and then simply press done. Once you've done that, you can preview your traced video and notice that now the line stays fixed in the 3D space. Well done. Little tip from me, if you're doing uh, a tracer overlay on top of a tracer, a 3D tracer overlay on top of a, a tracer, a shot tracer in your video, make sure that you look at the flight time of your tracer video. So for example, in this shot, we have 5.6 seconds and we want to apply the same 5.6 seconds to my video right here in the 3D camera movement. Once I'm done that, I can go simply to export selected shots, export the, the 3D rendered map shot, export my shot tracer video, press OK, and open the file where I want the videos to save at, and the system will now render my 3D um, uh, shot tracer video and my 3D flyover video. Now, in order to merge those two videos on, together, like just put an overlay one on top of the other in portrait or in landscape orientation, simply use any third party video editing app or software like Adobe After Effects to simply just overlay the um, 3D flyover video on top of your regular shot tracer video.